Chapter 2 The day was nearly spent when the witch hunter and the henchman reached the village of Klausberg. It was a small settlement, located almost at the very center of the rich farmlands which composed the district whose name the village bore, and, as such, it held a greater importance than its small size would suggest. The village served as a staging area for the food caravans that transported the harvests of the district northward to the ever-hungry inhabitants of Wurtban. At harvest time, the sleepy village would become a hub of activity, filled to bursting point with merchants and farmers, huntsmen and farriers, each man trying to outwit the other as they sought to haggle their wares or to secure goods, that could then be transported a long distance to Wurtbad and still earn a profit. The sound of drinking and carousing would rise from the village's one tavern, long into the night as all the peasant farmers and hunters tried their best to spend the money they spent a year earning upon long-denied revelry. No such sounds emanated from the tavern this day, as the lowering sun cast a burnt orange glow upon the plaster and timber walls lining the village narrow streets. Indeed, save for the grunting of pigs and the cackle of chickens, the lanes were utterly silent. The furtive and hastily withdrawn faces that sometimes appeared at the windows of some of the homes serving as the only sign of the villagers themselves. The two horsemen who navigated the dirty lane that wound its way through the small huddle of buildings proceeded at a wary canter, hands resting against the grip of sword or pistol. If trouble was to manifest itself upon these deserted streets, it would not find these men unprepared. As barren as the Count of Stirland's barracks when the gold ran out, observed the rearmost of the two riders. Streng cast a look over his shoulder, grimacing as he saw another face slip back behind a pair of shutters. It would appear that Brother Zerndorf's concerns are justified, commented his companion. Matthias Fullman did not look over at his henchman as he spoke, but kept his eyes focused upon the road ahead. He was less unnerved than his mercenary companion by the air of hostility and fear which surrounded them, as they passed each dwelling. But he had learned over the course of his career never to completely ignore attitudes of ill will. There is, most certainly, an aura of fear hanging about this place, more than might be occasioned by a pack of wolves or a band of goblins. Yes, snorted Strang, spitting a glob of phlegm into the dust. You would find a more cheerful welcome in the chaos wastes. The mercenary looked over as another set of shutters slammed shut behind them. This lot are jumping at their own shadow. Strang paused, his leer spreading, a glint appearing in his eyes. There's a fair bit of money to be made here, Matthias. The witch hunter favored his underling with a look of contempt. We are here to help these people. Liberate them from whatever unholy power is at work here, not to fleece them like a couple of Marienburg peddlers. He snapped, voice laden with disgust. All I'm saying is that we might help allay their fears by finding a few witches straight away. A bit of burning will do this town some good, the henchman persisted. Keep that larcenous tongue quiet, Strang, Fullman warned or you might discover that your services are not irreplaceable. The bearded mercenary sucked at his teeth as he digested Fullman's reprimand. Klausberg's inn loomed ahead at the end of the road upon which they travelled. The building was surrounded by a low wall of stone, and the courtyard beyond was paved, a small fountain bubbling at the center. Fullman considered a moldy stone cherub rising above the pool, spitting an endless stream of water from its bulging cheeks. The witch-hunter was not unfamiliar with the quality of worldly things, and as his practiced eye considered the sculpture, he found himself impressed by the level of skill and artistry that had gone into it. He turned the same appraising gaze upon the façade of the inn itself, noting the quality of its construction. Clearly, Klausberg had been quite prosperous in better times. However, a chill crept down Fullman's spine as he took note of the sign swaying from the post above the door of the establishment. In worn, faded characters, it bore the name, The Grey Crone, and beneath the crude Reichspiel letters was the image of an old woman, body bent and twisted by the years. 
The witch hunter's thoughts drifted back to Wurtbad and the destruction of the hag Chanta Favna. He made a sign of the hammer, knocking his palm against the saddle to ward off any ill omen. After waiting for a moment for any sign that a stable boy might scurry out from the large stables attached to one side of the inn, the witch hunter dismounted. Strang followed his master's lead, dropping from his own horse with a grunt. Fulman handed his underling the reins of his steed. The service appears a bit lacking, he observed. Take the horses into the stables. I'll be informing the landlord of that sorry fact. The witch hunter strode across the courtyard, his steely stare watching the windows of the inn for any sign of any furtive movement that had shadowed their progress throughout the village. He paused upon reaching the heavy oak door, banging his gloved hand against the portal. Not waiting for any response, Fulman proceeded into the grey crone. The common room that dominated the first floor of the inn was spacious, a cluster of tables strewn about its vastness, a long oak-topped bar running along one wall. Several small groups of peasant farmers were scattered about the tables, nursing steins of beer and jacks of ale. The men looked up from their hushed, subdued conversations to regard the newcomer, their eyes at once narrowing with suspicion as they failed to recognize Fulman for one of their own. The witch hunter returned their stares with an expressionless mask, making his way towards the bar. He took a special note of the bunches of garlic and demon root which had been nailed to the walls and above the doors and windows, their pungent reek overcoming even the smell of alcohol within the hall. Thulman gripped the counter, noting for a moment the age of the wood beneath his fingers, and then glancing back at the gawking inhabitants of the inn. Their harsh conversations had died away entirely now, all eyes locked on the scarlet and black-clad stranger. Presently, the landlord emerged from a little door set behind the bar. He was a short man, hair turning to grey, with large expressive eyes and a cheerful demeanour, despite the gloom tugging at his features. As he saw the stranger waiting at the counter, however, a bit of the cheer drained out of his face, replaced with an air of severity. He ceased wiping out the metal stein he was holding, setting both vessel and rag upon the bar. "'I suppose you'll be wanting a drink?' the innkeeper asked, words clipped and tones surly. The witch-hunter favoured the little man with his most venomous smile, pleased to see some of the anger fade away as the innkeeper withered before his gaze. "'If you cannot show your betters deference, I suggest you at least remember to show them respect.' He turned his stern gaze to encompass the rest of the hall. I am Matthias Fulman, Knight Templar of the Most Holy Sigmar, duly ordained witchfinder and protector of the faith. The hostile, sullen faces of the inhabitants remain the same. Aye, we know what you are, confined the innkeeper. But don't expect a witch hunter to find any kind of love here. The innkeeper filled a stein, setting the beer before Fulman. "'I'll serve you, as is my duty, but don't expect anything more. Not here. Not in Klausberg.' Fulman regarded the pop-eyed man, studying the mix of fear and hostility he found in those eyes. The innkeeper looked away, rubbing at some invisible stain. "'And why should a witch-hunter find cold welcome in Klausberg?' Fulman voiced his demand in a loud, cold voice, causing many of the gawkers to suddenly remember their own drinks. "'Is this some nest of heathens and heretics that the servants of Sigmar are treated so?' "'No,' the innkeeper replied, shaking his head, a touch of shame in his words, as Fulman cast suspicion on the man's loyalty to his god. "'But there is something, some terrible thing that is killing folks here, and them Klausners. The man paused, looking in the direction in which the Klausner keep would lie. They do nothing to protect us. Wolf hunts is what they give us, scoffed one of the farmers, beating forest and field to drive out whatever starving mongrels hiding there, as if any wolf were the cause of our troubles. "'What makes you so certain it isn't a wolf?' Fulman asked. 
ever hear of any natural wolf sneaking into a man's home, snatching him from his bed while his wife is still sleeping? countered Reichhertz. If it is a wolf, then it's no such wolf as should be natural, but some filthy thing of the powers. The man wrapped his knuckles on the countertop as he made mention of the dark gods, hoping to ward away any ill luck which might draw their attention. Damn Klausners know it too, commented a straw-haired farmer, face a mask of dirt. They know it and they're afraid, cringing behind their stone walls when night falls, leaving the rest of us to fend for ourselves. Fine lot of witch hunters they be, sneered another of the farmers, spitting at the floor. His bravado died, however, as Fulman looked in his direction, and the man wilted back into his seat. Fulman turned his attention back to the innkeeper, intending to question him further as to why the villagers felt their lord was doing nothing to end the ordeal but was interrupted by the opening of the inn door. He watched as three men entered the beer hall. It was obvious at once that they were distinctly apart from the modest, even shabbily dressed villagers. Each man sported a leather tunic, breeches and high leather boots, which reached to their knees. Each of the men also wore a sword sheathed at their side. The foremost of the men swaggered into the inn, the others following his lead. The leader of these newcomers was young, hair flowing about his head in a primed and pampered mane of pale blonde. His features were harsh, square jaws set in a look of arrogance and disdain. As he strode into the inn, his head brushed against one of the dangling clusters of garlic cloves. The man spun about angrily, gloved hand clutching at the bundle of herbs as if it was the throat of an enemy. Fools! Idiots! the man snarled. Words stretched by a slight lisp. The farmers cringed back in their chairs as the man glared at them. He the nonsense, yet you cling to such stupidity like frightened children, as if a bunch of foul-smelling weeds had any power against old night. He hurled the garlic across the room with a grunt of disgust, then looked away from the cowed denizens of the tavern, casting a curious glance over Fulman, as the witch-hunter leaned against the counter. He did not voice his curiosity, however, but looked past the witch-hunter, favoring the innkeeper with an unpleasant smile. "'And how is Miranda this day, Reichhertz? the man asked. He glanced about the room. "'I can't see her about. I do trust that she has not taken ill.' The mocking smile twisted a bit more. "'Not at all, my lord,' stammered Reichhertz. Then go and fetch her, the young man said, his words both a warning and a command. The sight of her pretty face will make that pig's water you peddle a bit more pleasing to me. Your brother won't favor you causing any mischief, Anton, protested the innkeeper. Ah, oh, yes, my brother Gregor. Although his tone did not change, a subtle suggestion of menace exuded from the young man at the mention of his brother. Did he perhaps offer you some special service? Perhaps he offered to protect your charming daughter? Reichertz licked his lips nervously as Anton spoke the words. As if it was me you need protecting from, you should thank all the gods that the Klausner should so much as look at that little cur you sired. But your brother, persisted the innkeeper, voice pleading. Anton Klausner slammed his fist against the counter. My brother is not here, he hissed. Now fetch that bitch, or I'll do it myself. Perhaps this young woman does not favor your company, a silky voice intruded. Anton Klausner spun about, hand clenched into a fist, glaring at the speaker. Fulman faced the belligerent youth with a condescending smile. If you would learn some manners, you might find a young lady a bit more agreeable. Perhaps I will teach you a few. Anton's voice dripped with hostility. He looked over at his two companions, watching as each of the men began to move to place themselves at the witch hunter's side, then favored Fulman with a snide grin. But first, I think I'll teach you to mind your own business. 
and Anne aimed a kick at the witch hunter's groin, surprised when the older man anticipated a low blow, stooping and catching his foot in his hands. Thulman straightened up, tipping Anton Klausner to the floor as he did so. The bully's two companions had been taken by surprise as well, and moved to attack the witch hunter from behind, when the solid wooden seat of a stool crashed into the face of one of them. The man dropped to the floor, a senseless bleeding heap. Streng swung the battered remnants of the stool at the other ruffian, causing the man to retreat back towards the wall. It seems like this is more my idea of entertainment than yours, Matthias, laughed Streng. The witch hunter glanced over at a henchman. I think I was rather generous, leaving two of them to you. The witch hunter looked down at Anton Klausner as the young man began to rise. One hand closed about the hilt of his sword. The weapon froze after it had been drawn only a few inches, the owner staring into the cavernous barrel of one of the pistols of Fulman. I am Matthias Fulman, witchfinder, he informed the subdued rogue. I have been sent here by Aldorf to investigate the sinister affliction which has been plaguing the district. Fulman's silky voice dropped into a threatening tone. So, you see, this district and what happens here are very much my business. He motioned for Anton Klausner to stand. The subdued noble glared sullenly at the witchfinder. Collect your friends and get out, Fulman told him, gesturing with his pistol to the insensible heap lying on the floor. And inform your father I will be paying him a visit shortly. The witch hunter watched as the browbeaten bully and his crony pulled their companion off the floor and withdrew from the tavern with their burden. When the door closed behind them, the witch hunter reholstered the pistol. The tables broke out into conversation once more, this time louder and more animated as the farmers discussed the unique and excited scene they had just witnessed. Fulman turned around as a small glass was set upon the counter near him. Thank you. Reichertz told him. Sigmar's grace be upon you. Fulman considered a small glass of schnapps, then gestured at the bottles of wine lined against the wall behind the bar. The innkeeper hastened to meet the witch hunter's wishes. That Anton is a bad one, worst of a rotten lot if you ask me, he said as he returned with Fulman's wine. I shall be seeing that for myself. The witch hunter informed him as he sipped on the wine. In the meantime, I need your best room for myself. You'll also make provision for my man here, be it a corner of your common room or a loft in the stable. I will be dining with the Klausners this evening, so there will be no need for you to cook or prepare a good meal. I'll also desire to speak with you when I return, so keep yourself available. Reichert's beamed at the witch hunter. Everything will be as you wish. Anything at all that I can do, you have only to ask. Fulman finished his wine and handed a glass back to the grateful innkeeper. He strode away from the counter, noting the admiring look of the farmers. Thank Sigmar you've come, one of them said. Perhaps now there will be an end to these murders. The declaration caused the rest of the crowd to break into a murmur of agreement and hope. Fulman walked towards Strang. The bearded mercenary grinned back at him. It seems you've won quite a following, Strang commented. Fulman nodded in agreement as another voice rose up from the crowd praising his arrival. Indeed, that ugly little incident may prove beneficial yet, he observed. How beneficial, I won't know until I've spoken with the young rake's father. Still, the goodwill of these people is certain to be of some aid. Thulman looked back at the farmers, toasting his health and boasting of the now swift and certain destruction of the fiend which had been preying upon them. Besides, these people can use a little hope in their lives. He cast a warning look at the henchman. Do try to control some of your excesses, he told the professional torturer. The witch hunter looked over at Reichertz as the innkeeper served another round of drinks to one of the tables. Also, the innkeeper seems to have a daughter. Keep your hands off her. The mercenary gaped with feigned injury. 
Don't worry, Matthias. These hands don't ever go where they haven't been invited first. Fulman shook his head. Some day, he said, I hope to find some scrap of virtue in that black pit which acts as your soul. If it comes in a bottle, then some day you probably will, laughed Strang, walking towards the nearest table and snapping his fingers to gain the innkeeper's attention. Thulman shook his head and strode out into the darkening street.